This time on 4x4 Garage, we made the trip to Tennessee to build the Colorado at Ian's shop. So I just came into Nashville on a plane from San Diego. I'm in my rental car on my way to Big Tire Garage. I'm really excited because I've never been to Ian's shop. I'm also excited to see what he's got in store for this Colorado build. Ian picked up the Chevy Colorado and it was literally just a shell. No bed, no suspension, no frame. Ian's been doing this for a long time. He's good at what he does. He knows how to build a vehicle. So I'm gonna step out of his way and just let him do his thing and assist him where he wants. You know, I have a few rules here in my shop when it comes to building something that's gotta be hardcore off-road, 100% custom, and basically, you know, form's gotta follow function. So I want it to look cool, but it's gotta work really well first. This is a pretty ambitious build, but most Ultimate Adventure builds are an ambitious build. We were asked to build this vehicle for real truck, and I thought what better truck to choose than a Chevy Colorado, because it's got a truck thing in it, and then I'm just gonna throw a bunch of off-road parts at it. It's really cool to be able to do this once again for Ultimate Adventure. Ultimate Adventure is a crazy trip. Most people would kill to be a part of just once. But what we do is we gather a bunch of off-roaders, about 25 vehicles in total, and we hit the world's best known, hardest trails, bucket list destinations. It is the ultimate off-road adventure. So when I went shopping for Colorados, I found a bunch that I liked, but then I found the perfect candidate for this. And that was literally a truck cab with a title sitting in a field in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So I bought it, brought it into the shop, and that's where it's all gonna start, with it and a pile of square tubing. So Ian's gonna custom build the frame in two parts. First the frame and then the truck bed. And once the two pieces are built, he'll weld them under the truck. Using his Bentec Pro, Ian designed the frame and built it out of two by three, 3 16 wall rectangular tubing and one and three quarter, 120 wall DOM. Measuring off all the body mounts on the Colorado cab gave me a baseline to work from. But knowing that I want this truck to function well on and off road during Ultimate Adventure means that I have to plan for both when designing this chassis. I'm making this truck frame design as simple as possible. It's gonna have a square bed section in the back that will hold my spare tire and mounts for the leaf spring rear suspension. But it's important to remember, even when you're building a simple design, you want to add in enough support and bracing for the structure to be strong and safe. This is basically the back half of the chassis and right now it's on the fab table upside down. So this is the top, this will be where the bed mounts. This is the bottom of the chassis right there. That's basically where the rockers will be on the truck. And the whole point of this is to basically give me a good foundation to do two things. One, put my flatbed on the back and also the spare tire is gonna mount underneath this bed. So the spare tire is gonna sit up underneath here. That's what the little winch mount there is for. It's basically gonna go underneath and pull the tire up into place. I've got something pretty trick planned for the rear swing shackles at the back. That's why these tubes are open. I'll show you that once I get it all together. But the next step here is to take this off the table, build the middle part of the chassis, and then when that is done, I can transition it all onto my big fab table that'll fit the whole chassis and start welding it all together. So the center part of the chassis is essentially what goes underneath the cab. Now, just like the rear chassis, I've built this completely upside down. So this is the top of the frame rail, and this is basically a new belly pan that will sling underneath the cab. 
I do this when I build cab trucks because it just gives you more space for the drivetrain and the drivetrain for this rig is actually pretty big. So by doing this little drop down belly, it's gonna give me much more space for everything, transmission, transfer case, I can run the exhaust through here and then also up front, I need it to drop my lower link mounts down a little bit to give me better vertical separation. Now the rear cross member I've tacked into place, the front one I'll just tack and the middle one I'll leave just floating because the position of it is not gonna be known until the transmission's in place because it'll run across and pick up that transmission mount. Next step is to take this, lock it in place with a couple of welds and some tacks, and then we'll get it onto the floor and get the cab sitting on top of it. So the Colorado's getting one ton axles because we don't want any breakage on UA. We've got a Dana 60 front with ball joints out of a Ford. We have a Chevy 14 bolt rear. Good strong stuff, but we have to take all the factory brackets off, strip them down, get them nice and shiny, so when we get it under there, we can build our brackets for our links and suspension. The little piece of angle iron that I scabbed onto that middle frame section does two things. Number one, it prevents those upper frame rails from bending out when I took it off the table, but it also gave me a lip to rest this rear frame section on. So now I know that it is matched up perfectly with it. Then I decided to pull some measurements. Had to make sure that it was equidistance on either side. And then I dropped an angle finder on that piece of frame rail and then on to our rear frame section just to make sure they're both traveling at the same plane. And then I shimmed it up on our Duralast jack stands which just was some pieces of scrap metal. So right now it is ready to weld into place. Now in an ideal world, you could build this on a full blown fab table. I have one of those and I could set this on it and build it. But realistically for a rig like this, you can build it on the floor in your garage and you can get it close enough for an off-road car. I mean, it's not rocket science. Now that the chassis is completely together and the cab is on it, I'm still gonna add bracing in a few key spots. I wanna brace this rear section into the midsection, so I'll probably run a little bit of an angle gusset down the side, and then I'll tie this upright into the frame. But now we can focus on the rear suspension and get an axle underneath here. The nice thing is, is the rear suspension in this thing, it is super easy because I designed it that way right from the start. It is leaf springs. You need a fixed shackle at one end and a swing shackle at the other. Bolt the leaf spring in and the suspension is 99% done. All you have to do is add shocks after that. The leaf springs on the back of this truck are actually super lift soft ride springs off of a K5 Blazer front application. Now the reason I like this leaf spring is it's short, so I don't have a huge departure angle behind the tire. I've used them on a bunch of rigs, so I know they work great. And I have all the spare parts I need just in case something happens on the truck. These are NFAB trail sliders. Because they don't make an application for a Colorado with a tube frame, these are Wrangler Unlimited. We're gonna have to do a little bit of customization, but really they're gonna save us a ton of time. But bottom line, they're gonna keep the doors functional throughout the entirety of the event so we don't have to bow and Luke Duke through the windows.
Ultimate Adventure started in 1999. So this year, UA 2022 is gonna be the 22nd Ultimate Adventure, even though it's been 23 years since the first one happened. People never know where UA will take place. So you can't specifically build a vehicle for just one kind of terrain. It kind of has to be good in all terrains. I think this Colorado is going to do pretty well for where we're taking UA this year. To attach the 14 bolt to the leaf spring, I'm using these U-bolt elimination plates. Now these are from Artec Industries. They're also doing the suspension up front with all the links for our three link. I like these because it cleans up the bottom of the housing, makes it super easy to install, and I just have to run bolts, not U-bolts around the axle. I have these on a bunch of my rigs. Anything that have leaf springs on it, I usually end up running these. It's just something I prefer to do. Once the axle's centered up underneath here, we'll get the pinion pointed at the transfer case, we'll tack them in place. For an eighth year in a row, Falcon Tire is back as the official tire of Ultimate Adventure. And once again, we're going to be installing some 38-1350-R17 Wild Peak MT tires. These are a great all-around tire. They work exceptionally well off-road, work very good on-road, which is important for Ultimate Adventure given all the road miles we hit. And they're very survivable, resistant to puncture, cuts, tears. We usually don't have any failures on these things. So we're going to get these mounted on some 17-inch wheels, get them on the Colorado, and then we'll have a rolling chassis. Christian is mounting those tires up to a set of Method Race Wheels bead grip technology wheels. These wheels have a machined lip built into the edge of the wheel to capture the tire's bead. I'll be able to air these down for rock crawling and air them up to run on the highway with no worries. So we started with the cab today, we've got the frame under it, the axles are positioned, we got the wheels and tires kind of mocked in there where they go. Next time we're gonna to get to the suspension and drivetrain. 